Left unchecked, TikTok will continue to build momentum. They will overtake Instagram and IGTV in terms of popularity, and they will likely eat into YouTube viewership as well. Hey, it's Rick Kettner here. Let's talk about TikTok, a rapidly growing social media network that's been building a lot of momentum over the last couple of years. More recently, they've started to come under some scrutiny for security and privacy concerns stemming from their relationship with the Chinese government. But as is always the case, what we're most interested in here is the business perspective. Why is TikTok growing so rapidly? How were they able to establish momentum in the first place? Can they really overtake established players like Instagram? And most important of all, what can we learn by studying their strategy? Now, before I get into this episode, I wanna quickly mention that I'm not a big fan of modern social media networks. I don't recommend that you go out and join TikTok or Instagram or Facebook if you haven't already. While these networks can certainly provide some utility when it comes to staying in close contact with family and friends and even staying in touch with businesses that matter to you, I think it's fair to say at this point that generally speaking, these platforms do more harm than good. They're highly addictive, there are all kinds of privacy implications, and in some cases, there's evidence to suggest that there are negative impacts when it comes to mental health, especially for younger users that are highly addicted to these platforms. So this episode is not about how to build a better social media network. What we're gonna focus on here are the universal business lessons that we can draw by studying TikTok's success. Specifically, we're gonna focus on three core reasons why TikTok is a threat to platforms like Instagram. So let's dive into it, starting with reason number one. TikTok created a new category. This is really important because anytime you're trying to compete against a brand that has an established presence in a category, it's important to not compete with them on their own terms. You don't wanna play into their strengths. Ultimately, this is why Google Plus really failed to gain traction when it came to trying to compete with Facebook. Their goal was to build a better Facebook, and you could argue they were successful in doing that. At the time, they had some really powerful features that one could argue made it a better product, a better platform than Facebook. But unfortunately for Google, this is not a very effective strategy. And one of the reasons why is the way that consumers make connections between product categories and the brands that are dominating those categories. So for example, if I mention a product category like fast food, most people immediately link fast food with McDonald's. And this has nothing to do with McDonald's making better fast food or a better product in one way or the other. It has everything to do with McDonald's generally being the first brand to make themselves connected to that category in the minds of their audience. So most customers out there, their very first connection in terms of thinking about fast food was with McDonald's. This is straight out of the 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing by Al Reese and Jack Trout. The way that they explain it in the book is that it's better to be first than it is to be better. It's better to be the brand that establishes this connection first than it is to come along later and try to demonstrate that you have a better product or a better solution compared to whoever did get there first. So. Within the context of social media, you don't wanna go up against Facebook or Instagram on their own terms. You wanna do what TikTok has done and you wanna create an entirely new category. That way, you can actually be first to make the connection between that category and your brand. This is the advice in the 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. You wanna create a new category and you wanna help customers make a connection with your brand and eventually, if that category takes off, it can actually overtake the other categories and that's one way that you can actually beat another brand at their own game. You simply create a different category that eventually overtakes them. So this is actually what Instagram did to get on the radar of Facebook in the first place. Instagram invented a new approach to social networking. At the time, Facebook was primarily accessed through a web browser. They were the most popular social network, but they were being used through a web browser. Instagram came along, they took an entirely different approach. They went with a mobile first strategy and they built the first truly mobile social media network that took advantage of the camera built into the iPhone. They leveraged the ability to create or to capture photos and to share them immediately. And Mark Zuckerberg realized at that point that mobile was gonna be the future 
of social media and this, that this was an existential threat to Facebook's long-term success. So he bought Instagram for a billion dollars. At the time, he was ridiculed for it. It's since proven to be one of the best acquisitions in all of tech history. He bought Instagram and he immediately pivoted Facebook over to a mobile-first strategy moving forward. And so today, Instagram arguably is one of the most popular networks, but it could have been the dominant player in the space had Facebook not acquired it and quickly adjusted their own strategy as well. So TikTok is following the exact same game plan. They're creating a video first social network. So they're focusing on making video native to the platform. Now, Instagram certainly has added video. It's kind of been tagged on as an afterthought. They do have IGTV and they're making an effort into video. But as we get into more detail here, you're gonna see how TikTok is taking a very different approach. They're video first, video native, and they're focused entirely around being successful when it comes to short, term, short form video entertainment. So Instagram, if we really get down to how most customers think of Instagram, it's an image sharing social network. That's how, what it's best known for. So even if they do layer on video as an afterthought, it's not quite the same. And again, we're gonna get into that more detail, but TikTok is a new and much more addictive approach when it comes to video. So let's explore that further by diving into reason number two. TikTok's approach reduces friction. One of the single most important things that any business can do when it comes to providing value for customers is look for opportunities to reduce friction between where the customer is at today and where they want to be. A great example of this would be Google. They built their empire based on making search easier and easier by stripping away any friction between having a user ask a question and get the answer that they're looking for. Right from the very early days, Google launched their service with a very stark and simple interface. The entire focus was on the search field, making it really easy for somebody to start a search. And of course, over time, they've continued to improve this. They've partnered with web browsers, they've partnered with Apple with the iPhone, and of course, their own Android operating system to make Google the default search engine. But they've also made all kinds of innovation when it comes to autocomplete. So even when you just begin to type your search phrase into Google, you're already starting to see a completed search phrase and most important of all, results displayed down below. So even before you complete your search query, you can start to see potential answers. And in some cases, this is the next iteration, Google will actually answer your question in line in the very first result. So you don't even have to click a result. You don't have to finish your search query. You don't have to click a result. In many, many cases, I think it's something like 30% of cases is something that I heard recently. You get an answer without even clicking a result. And of course, Google's continuing to invest in voice search and other future paradigms to make sure that they're on top of continuing to make it easier and easier for people. And so Google reduces friction when it comes to search. Uber does the same thing when it comes to transportation. Netflix does the same when it comes to accessing movies and TV shows. So many highly successful businesses at the end of the day have a lot of their success be based on the fact that they continue to reduce friction and make it easier for customers to accomplish whatever it is that they want. Now, TikTok is doing the exact same thing when it comes to accessing short form video entertainment. They strip away all the friction, they make it so that literally you click the app icon and you're immediately taken into content. The default experience is straight into content. You're not browsing thumbnails like on YouTube, you're not scrolling a feed, hoping to find something interesting like Instagram or Facebook, you're taken directly into full screen video and they use the TikTok algorithm to get better and better at predicting the kinds of content that you're gonna like. And on the flip side, they reward content creators that make content that is highly engaging. So if you create a video and you publish it on TikTok where the first few seconds draws the viewer in, keeps them engaged, entertained, or intrigued, and they watch more of the video, then that content will be blasted out and be consumed by more people on the platform. So they're rewarding highly engaging and addicting content. But it's really important to understand this habit loop because that's at the center of TikTok success. And this is something that was first introduced to me in detail in Hooked by Nir Eyal. He explained the habit loop and how platforms like Instagram and Facebook make their services so addictive. And TikTok is a perfect example of this principle at play because the moment you have an internal trigger, whether it's boredom, loneliness, one of these emotions that causes you to look for a quick fix, you can launch TikTok and 
immediately you're brought into content to potentially scratch that itch and to resolve that problem for you. And not only that, but they leverage the same mechanics as Instagram and Facebook when it comes to variable rewards. So as you scroll from video to video, Sometimes you'll find a really great video, sometimes not so great, but it's this variable reward that actually makes the service incredibly addictive. If you're not familiar with this concept, I strongly recommend that you check out Hooked by Nir Eyal. It dives into much, much more detail on exactly what makes these services so addictive. But the point here is that TikTok is a highly addictive, it's a better mouse trap or a better human trap is probably a better way to say when it comes to creating a highly addictive service that draws people in, captures their attention, keeps them engaged and makes them continue to come back for more over time. So all of this contributes ultimately to reason number three for TikTok success and that is network effects have kicked in. As with every social network before it, TikTok is built on network effects, which means every new user that joins the service makes the entire service more valuable to the people that are already using it. This is a very important business principle, very popular among social networks, but applies to almost anything out there. Books, for example, if you know your neighbor, a family member, a friend has read a book, it's more intriguing to you, not only because they've read it and possibly enjoyed it, but you know in completing that book, you're gonna have somebody that you can sit down and chat with in terms of discussing some of the ideas in the book. So this kind of idea of network effects where something is more valuable because more people are using it plays into TikTok success and plays into the success of any social network ultimately, but the, the key idea here is TikTok has reached critical mass. They've reached the point at which the network is growing faster and faster because of this concept of network effects. And what this means at the end of the day is you have influencers on the platform that are highly incentivized to maintain the momentum that they've created and the investment they've made in the platform. And it's not just because they've built a following on TikTok and they've got some popularity and they've invested time and energy in creating content. TikTok is unique in terms of how the platform operates. It's very community driven, more so than platforms like Instagram where it's a little bit more geared towards family and friends and people that you know. TikTok is much more geared towards the community as a whole. And so there's a whole focus around trends, memes, internal culture, and these kinds of things ultimately mean that if you're a successful influencer on TikTok, even if you could move your audience over to another platform like Instagram or YouTube, you wouldn't necessarily want to because you actually have more influence, more clout, more impact on a platform like TikTok because of how community driven it is. And so you have creators that are heavily invested and actually want TikTok to succeed and so they continue to attract more people into the platform and because of network effects, this replicates where you even have lower level influencers, people that are newer to the platform might not have quite as big of a following, they start to see this pattern as well and they prefer to be on a platform like this where they have greater clout and greater impact. Now, Facebook did try to replicate what TikTok is doing and interestingly enough, they didn't do what they did with Snapchat. With Snapchat, they simply incorporated some of the innovative features that Snap had created into Instagram. They borrowed, stole, however you want to describe it, those features, in, integrated them into Instagram, and ultimately were able to kind of ward off Snapchat from really becoming a threat by simply enhancing Instagram with a lot of those features. They didn't do that with TikTok. They recognized that TikTok is an entirely different category. And they tried to create a new product called Lasso, and their strategy was to focus on markets where TikTok had not yet built a following. So they went into markets where TikTok wasn't established, wasn't a successful platform yet. Unfortunately for Facebook, very recently, I, I read a headline, I'm not 100% sure on the details, but I believe they've killed Lasso. And I think that's largely due to the fact that TikTok is clearly the runaway winner in this category. At the end of the day, where that leaves us is that TikTok really is unchallenged when it comes to this video first approach to short form video content. And so with all of this in mind, it's prediction time. It's almost impossible to predict exactly what is gonna happen with TikTok because there are massive, unpredictable external factors at play. Specifically, you have governments around the world putting massive pressure on the company. India has banned the application outright. The US government is apparently considering something similar. I believe other governments are considering this as well because of TikTok's relationship 
with the Chinese government. So it's very difficult to make a prediction given all these unpredictable factors. But what I can predict with reasonable certainty is that left unchecked, TikTok will continue to build momentum. They will overtake Instagram and IGTV in terms of popularity, and they will likely eat into YouTube viewership as well. Now, unfortunately for Facebook, they can't just buy their way out of this problem as they have in the past. They can't acquire TikTok like they did with Instagram or WhatsApp or with some of their other potential competitors. And the reason is there's a lot more scrutiny on Facebook acquisitions today than there have been in the past. And perhaps even more important than that, there's a lot more scrutiny around TikTok and their relationship with China. So for those reasons, I don't think it's very likely that Facebook is gonna be able to simply acquire TikTok to resolve this issue. I think it's much more likely that they're gonna attempt to catch up by iterating Instagram and making that platform much more native when it comes to video content. Whether or not that's actually gonna prove successful is open for debate. I think they may end up getting a very strong assist from the US government in the form of additional pressure on TikTok. As a side note, I actually think the US government very much wants Facebook to succeed and to become the dominant social media network. Despite their rhetoric in the media, I think they have a strong incentive to actually have Facebook become the dominant player in the market. That's a little bit beyond the scope of this episode. Maybe if it comes up in the comment section, we can dive further into that in the follow-up Q&A episode. But the main point here, the main message of this episode is that almost regardless of what happens and the unpredictable nature of the situation right now, TikTok's strategy to create a new category, to reduce customer friction, and ultimately to leverage network effects have given it an incredible opportunity to compete against massively successful brands. So regardless of exactly what happens, their strategy has paid off and they're in a position, they have in fact already had a huge impact on the social media landscape. That's it for this episode. If you have any questions or thoughts about anything that we covered here, let me know down in the comment section below. We'll likely be following this up with a Q&A session to go into more depth based on the questions and comments that come in. If you're listening to the audio edition, I'll include a link in the show notes to go to the video edition. That way you can share your comment for possible inclusion in the Q&A session. If you're interested in more content like this, I recommend that you subscribe or follow my updates on social media so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thank you for watching and I look forward to connecting with you again in a future episode.